Today on the channel we're gonna find out if it's better to buy or DIY your laptop cooling pad right here on Noisybergs. First I'm gonna have a look at the competition. This is one of the more expensive and best rated cooling pads right here on Amazon.nl. Let's have a look what's inside. So this is supposedly to be a fancy one. A fancy one that comes with basic packaging. So we lost one of the vents already into the packaging. So I'm going to put that thing back in here. This is a very special frame with the open air design. It's something I really haven't seen previously, but it has some feet right over here, like this. A bigger feet to give some, yeah, you know. It also comes with some air dampers. Now I don't know what to dampen about this thing. It has an extra gasket. It comes with the USB cable, so I guess this has to be powered by USB. The store-bought one feels a bit cheap. It's very plasticky in the sense that it feels cheap. And uh, the overall looks are okay, I guess. We have a double USB a port. I think it's a pass-through and it's a power port. We have two dust filters and we have some control things down here. We have the two rubber feet. Well, these are metal feet with some rubber pads on it to make sure that your laptop doesn't slide off. And on the back side, there's nothing special except for the height adjustable feet like this. For my design, first we have to assemble it. But before all that, we have to sand it and glue it. That's going to be it for the gluing. If you want to know more about 3D Gloop PLA, then click on one of these links. The glue up is finished. Now it's time to put in some magnets. The file comes with two little feet that mount right here with some magnets. The magnets that you will need to use are five millimeters in diameter, but you can always drill out these holes a little bit bigger so you can fit your own style of magnets. I'm going to give them a little tap so that they are fully seated, like that. And if you made your magnets properly, they do self-align, like that. This is how strong the magnets are. <laughs> I'm just dropping it on. The feet are housed in here. You can take these and then they self-align, like this. All right, all the magnets are done. Now it's time for some electronics. This is what you're going to need. I'm using two 18650 cells with a cheap power bank like this one. Then we have a BMS. Then we have the fan controller. This is only to split out the power to all the fans. You need, of course, three fans. Then we have a boost converter. This takes the lower voltage and ramps it up to the voltage we want, higher in this case. Then we have a switch button and two types of wire. Why am I using this BMS? We are using this power bank only to charge the batteries and we take the power directly from the cells. So we need some kind of protection for undervolting and overcurrent. The fan controller already came with some connectors like these ones. I think this is a Molex one. I sold the two wires on it and I put these on the output of this board. Now we have to deliver it with energy that we are going to take from this power bank and we have to put in this BMS.
and this is my design. This is fully 3D printed. The top is printed in ABS and the bottom is printed in PLA. We got some feet that's removable with magnets and a little compartment so you can storage your feet and have a nice flat design. To see what's inside, we have our battery. We have a double BMS because I didn't have a five amp one. So these are both two and a half amp. We have our voltage converter. This takes the voltage from four volts and converts it to, I think I set it to eight volts. And then we have our fan hub controller just to plug in all our fans. So you could change this with some silent fans and these usually have uh, 0.13 amps instead of the 0.21 amps, which should make running these fans a lot easier with a 3.6 volt lithium battery. From the side, we have our power button. We have our uh, charging dock. So you put in your uh, charging USB cable. This charges the batteries. And that's all we have. Turning it on. You can hear it makes some buzzing noises. That is our voltage regulator. And we have some fan noise because the blades are uh, fairly close to the grate pattern. Now we had our first look at the two designs. Let's first start with powering up the store-bought one. I'm gonna plug in the USB-A port in the back. We have some colors. And we have some fans. I can hear some fans. We have our on and off button. This just turns off everything. All right, we have our LED. These are static colors. And if you long press it, you just turn it on or off, apparently. I'm really surprised there are only LEDs at the bottom. That one and two on the side like this. And the fans are blower style because if you look inside, maybe or maybe not, you can see, but these are powered by some uh, blower fans. So this, these are going to be five volt blower fans. Then we have speed, speed number one, number two, and number three. And these push on decent airflow. I am uh, really surprised. So we have the zero speed, I guess. Then we have speed one, speed two, speed three. And I am very surprised about the airflow. Let's put on the laptop. And it is sealing. Yeah, I am happily surprised. It is sealing. All right, I'm gonna power up this laptop. We're going to do some tests and compare it with my design right over here. Do some price comparisons, say what I think about it, and then we can come to a conclusion. The game that we are going to test with is Hitman. Why Hitman? Because Hitman is the most taxing that this laptop can have. Uh, CPU and GPU power. So let's load up a game. And this is going to be the test without any kind of help. Yeah, some conclusions. The overall winner in temperature is this design. Then 
in order of coolness, I think mostly in fulfillness. My own design. It was so much fun to design it, test it, see it working for the first time from 3D designing to the effective product. But I'm not giving up. Bonus points, as you might hear. It works fully wireless. You can charge it while using it. So that is, I think, bonus points because this thing has to be permanently plugged in. Okay, you could use a power bike or something like that. But if you want to go for the ease, my design. <laughs> now I'm not going to give up on temperatures because if I learned one thing is that the seal probably made the difference. Now, luckily, give me a minute. The company I bought it from gave me another seal. So I am thinking if I take this seal and... All right, that's what I'm going to do. As you can see, I have just loosely draped the second seal they gave with the other one on it, like this. And this hopefully should give it a good seal with the laptop now. And so there's one thing I should do and that's test it. The seal is underneath. Now let's test it again and uh, maybe we can get the same temperatures. I'm going to plug it in to charge it because I have used it a lot. If we want maximum RPM of the fans, I cannot feel any wind from the side, so the seal is working. Oh yeah, buddy. <laughs> we actually are touching 69 degrees. Nice. Only had to put on a seal, made the laptop a bit more angled so there's more airflow. Et voila! It's as good as the store-bought laptop cooling pad that costed about uh, this. Now, should you buy or DIY? I think the question is very clear. If you are handy, like to tinker, like to design, like to 3D print, then go ahead and do it. If you're not, then there's always a good second option. I'm gonna be honest, you're probably better off just buying this one. This took two years, a buttload of development that is not being accounted in the final price. By the way, this is the uh, final price. But like I said, if you really like to design stuff, make it yourself and look at it. This is just so cool. It's not perfect, I know. It's a bit crooked. That's the uh, downside of FDM printing. I think if you do this in the uh, resin, that it would be oh, so perfect. But everything just works on battery powered and on USB. So yeah, this is so much fun. I'm going to include the files of this laptop cooling pad into the description below so you can print it. DIY it yourself so you don't have to buy this crap. Let me know in the comments what you would like to see next in the buy or DIY section because I really liked doing this video. So comment down below and uh, that's going to be it for me. So if you like this video, give me a big thumbs up. Consider subscribing to see more stuff like this. And guys, I see you in the next one.